This is the next special episode 32, IFA 2014, on Saturday, September 6th, 2014, and now, Sony 1. This next special is hosted by Ryan Rampersad and Matthew Petchel. Hey, how's it going? It's good, how about you? I'm doing well. Really? I think we're here for a special. We are here for a special. Do you know what the special is? No, no, I, I have nothing, I didn't hear anything in the regular news this week. Well, 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 I don't know why you didn't, because we talked about it at length on the uh, ATN. Did that happen already? Uh, yeah, you know, at the Nexus, that, that show that happens every week, where we talked about the uh, The IFA. premiere show that happens every week. The premiere show, right, of course. And so what are we talking about? Oh, um, that a bunch of people were going to do a bunch of things in this uh, little three-day event. Two-day event? Well, how long was this? Were no, there delays? Were there scheduling conflicts? No, there wasn't. And in fact, l- let's just be clear. IFA, just like CES, all of the named brand speakers, they all did their things before IFA really started. But so we all that's p- a reverse delay, isn't it? Yeah. And, and, and so we just put it all under the umbrella of IFA. And in fact, we were putting Motorola under the umbrella of IFA because instead of determining that their product was so much better, they put it with everybody else's. So, you know, if you uh, followed along on at the Nexus last week, we listed a bunch of OEMs doing their phone releases and things. And, you know, we talked a little bit about what we thought might come out. Right? Remember any mm-hmm. of that? Uh, so you can listen to those uh, horrible things on the uh, ATN 141, but probably don't do that at this point, because now all the things we actually know. That's why this special is here. And that's why we should get started. Mm-hmm. So, so let's begin with the uh, Samsung. Th- th- what they have this week? Well, they did something kind of strange. They released not the Gear 3, they released the curved Gear S. Ooh, that's, that sounds completely new. Well, okay, so you know how last week we thought it might be something very similar to the Gear Fit? Well, it's not exactly elongated in terms of uh, the the wrist. It's it's more of just a regular kind of smartwatch you might see running Android. But it doesn't run Android. It runs Tizen, which is unfortunate, which means nobody's going to have apps for it and nobody's going to develop for it. Hmm. And, uh, you know, it has a 2-inch display. It has uh, 3G connectivity, which makes it a little bit different than most Android uh, wear devices and pretty much any smartwatch really when who can power 3g connectivity usually no one yeah well, I, can, I can see the sim card slot right in the back exactly it's um funny looking yeah i, I was expecting like a slot on yeah the side. well it's curved so it's hard to have a slot i can imagine well so in, in my question is it only has a 300 mah battery so how long could you possibly have this off the charger probably not that long you know i would expect a watch to go a whole 24. At least, right? Well, so the uh, the release date is set for October sometime. No word on pricing yet, but, you know, it's probably going to be around the other pricing, so at least $200. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. But, so, they're claiming that this 300 milliamp hour battery can go for two days. That's what they're claiming? I don't believe they're right. Yes. Well, You we'll know, most, to... most smartwatches have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. They can barely get two days, and I don't think something with 3G will get that many days either. But the screen looks, you know, bigger than most of the yeah, other so smartwatches, even, So it's even stacked worse against it. Because that's a whole two-inch display? Mm-hmm. That's, that's pretty good. Yeah. So we also have the uh, Note 4. Uh, look at, is it huge, like I expected it? It's the same size as last year's model, which is to say it is 5.7 inches, uh, now using the Quad HD resolution, so it's literally huge. Yeah, that's... Cool, cool. Uh, just like the uh, Galaxy Alpha that was released a few weeks slash months ago, it has a nice metal band around it, very similar to the you know uh, iPhone style metal band. Mm-hmm. Uh, it has double the pressure sensitivity for the stylus, which is always appreciated. Uh, it has 16 megapixel camera uh, with optical image stabilization, so that's good, I guess. Um, three gigabytes memory, 32 gigabytes of storage from the base model. It has a heart rate monitor and the fingerprint scanner, just like the 5S, S5. Oh. Is that what they call it? Yes. S5. Uh, so nobody uses that fingerprint scanner because it's a travesty. In the heart rate monitor, I feel like could be somewhat fake. Now, it is also going to ship with Android 4.4.4, and pretty much every phone here today will be shipping with that because we're all colluding clearly with the industry to miss Android L promptly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, great. Uh, no release or price yet, but it's seen a pattern. Pr- probably the same as the current generation Note. Okay. So, be prepared to pay your 650 off contract. That's crazy. Well, you know, yeah, it is. Mm-hmm. 
Now, there's something else crazy coming up. What is it? It's called the Note Edge. Now, so tell me about this Note Edge. Well, imagine an edge, and then, you know, one side of the phone is just like all the others, very square, harsh edge. And the other side, the touchscreen curves off the edge of the phone and into nothing. And it's just terrible looking. And I can't imagine anyone would ever want this. One edge is there, the other is not. So what what is on the edge that is screen? Oh, all your menus, your like um. It's kind of like a taskbar almost. Yeah, on the wrong side of the phone. Well, which well that is the right side technically. <laughs> you, okay, <laughs> fine, you got me. <laughs> yeah. So, I don't know, but would you really want that? Well, so let's let's go over some of the Note oh, the Edge specs. specs. So it's For basically the new flagship. it's basically the same as the Note Four. But instead, as Matt mentioned, the phone's screen is curved around one side, the right side, in fact. Uh, it's used by Samsung as an always available launcher on the home screen. And then when the main screen is off itself, it can show the time or, you know, like the next upcoming meeting or whatever you might want. Uh, it seems kind of limited. And in fact, uh, I think they even have some apps that demo usage of it, but really it's just a glorified launcher. Hmm. That's cool. Can it all, can you, what else can it do besides just be a launcher? Uh, I don't little... know. Oh, what, what else can it do? I, I think it can only be a launcher right now from Samsung directly. Oh, Allegedly, cool. somebody could m- develop for it. Well, wouldn't it be cool to, like, like you know how at the top of your, um, like when you scroll down, you can see notifications and stuff. Wouldn't it be cool to get notifications just on the edge? So if, even if you had it fl- flipped upside down, you could just see it? I don't even know if you could see it when the phone's physically upside down. Did you see their um, labeling of the Note Edge? Yes, on the on side the edge. Yeah, it's in, but it's in, the, of course, Samsung. It's two phone. screens in one. You it's, know. It's, it is It is actually two screens in one. It's two independent displays. Software controls it to be one physically or software-wise. Which means I, I just think it's really cool how they got the two screens butted together like that, though. Mm-hmm. Yep. Because when you're not using it as a separate screen, it just looks like one piece. Exactly. Yep. It's, it's beautiful like that. It just... Do you think that adds to the production cost? Oh, most certainly. Does it, does it add to usability? Probably, it probably makes nah. it worse. Yeah. Um, now, so it, 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 of course, you can't use your stylus over there because it's curved and, and thing, like your stylus will just fall off every time. So, not, case not, manufacturers are going to have a lot of fun with this one. Well, it, it, it'll just, it might, it'll be cheaper for them to produce because it won't have one side. I, I don't, well, what's it going to click onto? The other three sides. Hmm. I yeah. guess that's enough. Mm-hmm. So, as, as as per the theme here, no official release date or price yet. It may be the same price as the Note 4 or a little bit more, depending on how they think it will do in the market, which is probably poorly. Uh, it will be, however, available on all major carriers sometime, someday, soon. Now, here's a weird curveball for you. A Gear VR headset. Oh, wow. Wasn't seeing this coming. I didn't see this coming either. It's weird. So here's how it works. Imagine you have an Oculus Rift, but instead of some Oculus screens, you put your just purchased $650 Note 4 inside of a headset. There you go. That's what this is. So it's a headset that you can literally put your Note 4 in. Yes. And so you would think like, okay, so you put that in there, you get speakers and other things hooked up right to your ears. No, it has ambient sound. Like, mm-hmm. on, so the, there's a unibar that will go over the top of your head, messing with your hair at all times, and that is where the sound is going to come out of. Well, so, That's... so it's kind of cool though. Uh, so the the entire device is powered by the Note 4, so. Uh, that that's kind of cool. It, is. it doesn't need any heavy batteries. It just needs your heavy Note Four. Uh, so like five inches from your face. They they partnered with Oculus to make it actually. So that that's probably good. It has a helmet trackpad, so that if you need to navigate menus and other things, you can still do that. Which is probably something that the original Oculus should have had. And the Innovator Edition, which I think is a wonderful name for a product, will be given out this fall. Although there's no price yet, so. Be prepared to pay more than the 200 or 350 for the DK2, uh, you know, deal. Are you gonna get one? Uh, no. No, no, no I'm not planning on it. Is that okay? So, what does this cost? On top of your, you know, note. Well, so if the note 650, this is probably gonna be at least DK2 price, which is 350. So, grand total is about a thousand dollars. And what do you, what do you get? Well, well, you just get the headset. That's it. I mean, that's it. It's not a product. It's a toy. 
But it, toys you can play with. But I don't know if you can really play with this either, because unless yeah. enough people decide to play with it and then make something with it, it's just a dead end. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, not a fan. Yeah. Well, let's talk about Sony. Oh, they do real things all the time. You know, they, they they actually make some nice phones. It's just here in America, the uh, major carriers never seem to pick up and carry those phones uh, and then promote them enough to matter. So this year they uh, released the Z3, Z3 Compact, and Z3 Tablet Compact. Wow, it's a lot. A lot of words and, and Zs. And so let's let's begin with the Z3. It is a 5.2-inch display phone at 1080p. It is a 6-core Snapdragon 801. I have no idea where they found that. I don't even know if that's true. It seems really suspicious to me. I've never heard of a 6-core Snapdragon. Yeah, okay. So my, my source on the other side of the table says that that might be inaccurate. Uh, so, uh, three gigabytes of memory, which is wonderful. 20 megapixel camera using Sony lenses, which is always great. Uh, it has a 12,800 ISO. That's an insane ISO. That's great for low light performance. Yeah. Uh, it has also a new wider lens. So it, it is using a 25 millimeter field of view, which is huge, I guess. Uh, it also has 4K recording support and new improved optical image stabilization, a much lighter body, one millimeter thinner, the same 3100 mAh battery as previously in the Z2. Oh, and it is now IP68 water industry resistant. That's cool. So that sounds good for a top tier flagship, right? Yeah. Now, what would you think the Z3 Compact would have? You know, like maybe a Snapdragon 400 and a crappier 16 megapixel camera and, you know, it's just lesser specs, right? You'd That's ex- what I'd expect, yeah. Well, the Z3 Compact has a 4.6 inch screen versus the 5.2 on its bigger brother. Instead, it has a 2600 mAh battery because it is physically smaller, but otherwise the specs are all the same. So it's... Just- I'd, I'd imagine more people would buy the compact then. Right. So, I mean, it, you have a choice now. You can have the phone that's the same, and you can have it in the size no, you would I like. I think I really like that. That's a really nice feature. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you know of anyone else who's done this? Normally, you get the crappy things in a little one. Exactly. So, no. So, Sony has realized this. This is exactly what they did with the Z2 and Z2 Compact. So, it's a known thing Sony does. Why, why does no carrier pick this up? Exactly. And it's just, it's just, it's, it, it has something to do with marketing from Sony. It has to do with carriers just not caring. So th- there's that. We also have the Z3 compact tablet. It's eight inches, uh, 1920 by 1200 display. It's 6.4 millimeters thick. That's 6.4 millimeters. That's really good. It's slimmer than the iPhone. I don't know compared to the iPad, but the, um, iPhone, 5s is like 7.5 millimeters. Makes the the, the the touchpad look so big. I mean, yeah, I, I can't even slam it hard enough to make it worthwhile. Uh, now, the interesting gimmick that these are going to be shipping with is something called Remote Play. Uh, it's the highlighted gimmick, and basically, if you for some reason bought a PS4 sometime recently, and you bought one of these Z3 family devices, you could replay. Or you could play remotely on your PS4 using the screen on this device. Hmm. So uh, I have no idea how you would control the game while playing on this device, but you could do it. Yeah, that's... I don't know. Mm -hmm. So that is kind of a cool gimmick. You know, you can keep all of the Sony devices in family. That's nice. It's cool. It's not like anyone else can do that. Microsoft? Nope. No. Nintendo? Nope. Very no. So uh, tell me about this... Tell me about the smartwatch. Oh, this new smartwatch three. It's it's so overwhelming. It makes you almost want to be underwhelmed. Um, three twenty by three twenty display, four gigabytes of storage, and um, yeah, it's it's a it's an entire watch that's got a little curve and looks very 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 tacky and stupid in my opinion. So I guess Sony underwhelming. Wasn't, it's a watch. So Sony wasn't trying in the watch department. Um, some people are going to buy it, maybe. And unlike, you know, the other people, we know it's going to cost $230, and it's going to be coming this fall. But So, <sighs> interested? Yeah, but, so, this has a very slow quad-core 1.2 gigahertz processor, so, but it has a 420 milliamp hour battery. So, it's got a much smaller screen, much everything, so the battery life's going to be a lot better than their so competition. So, it'll be, it'll be 15 hours instead of 13 hours. I was going to say, like, 15 hours instead of 5 hours. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Fine. I, That's fair. I don't know. I don't like any of these wristbands I'm seeing, mm-hmm. and just good luck using it. Mm-hmm. So what about this uh, premium music player? It's called the A17. 
That sounds like an apple chip. Uh, it, I mean, it has to be. So it is a odd product. It has a 2.25 inch QVGA display. It has a brushed aluminum body with a 64 gigabytes of internal storage with an additional 128 possible through micro SD support. It has no touch controls, oddly enough. You'd think most devices now would. No. No, instead, it has a D-pad based navigation controller. They made a really good nano. It, it, it includes FM radio, Bluetooth, and add NFC to, com- to pair easily with, uh, you know, external devices. I don't know why you would pair an MP3 player with an external device. Your headphones? But what headphones have NFC? The Bluetoothing ones? No. Uh, it, 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 the focus of this device is the quality of music playback. So it can play FLAC, AF, WIF, WAF, and ALAC. I think you've gone around the bend. <laughs> I wrote them down. These are real things. All right. Um, it can also, now this is interesting, upscale the quality of music that is compressed like MP3. Oh, that's nice. I've never heard of that. I don't know if it's real. I'm sure it'll take, you know, educated guesses to do it, but I, uh, I suppose. Now, they say it can do 30 hours of playback. And now here's the best part. How much do you think this product would sell for? No, oh, $400. No, you're, you're, you're lucky then. It's only going to be $300. So that's, uh, you know, how many nanos can I get? Uh, two nanos for the price of this one premium playback device. They have touchscreens, don't they? They do actually. Yes, I think you're they're right. They're only a screen. Actually. Yeah, they're they're only a screen. Huh, that's oh, but this looks so much better. No, it does stronger. No, not not okay. Maybe okay. So finally, in the Sony de- department, we have new phone cameras. So I don't mean camera phones. I mean phone cameras. Hmm. Literally, you take this attachment and you hang it off the back of your phone, and then it wirely pairs with it, and you can get a 30x super zoom, 24 megapixel camera. With the equivalent lens to a 24 to 720, 720 millimeter shot, which is huge. That's really wide angle. Wow. But it's not for low light because it only has an aperture of 3.5 to 6.3. But if it's in daylight and you're doing some sports shots with your camera phone or phone camera, depending on how you say it, this could be great. Uh. This this is really, really, really amazing. And it doesn't just work with Sony phones or No, it should work with any phone that, you know, has a real ability to pair with it, which is pretty much anything with Bluetooth four. Hey, that's really cool. How much is this gonna cost? So it only costs three hundred and fifty dollars, which is to say most lenses cost three hundred to six hundred to nine hundred to twelve hundred dollars. So in the scope of things, you're getting a peripheral for your phone, which costs the same as a lens for a DSLR. And you're getting nice quality. Right. Now, can phones actually handle this? Oh, yeah. Or will they scale them down? Or... Oh, no, no problem. I mean... When do these become available? No, no, no. You don't get to know that. No release date given. Aww. You get a price, at least. Sometime this fall, probably. I can't imagine them showing now and holding it off for too long. I don't know what the market is like for camera phones. Phone cameras. So, you actually have nice cameras, and then you you know people who have nice cameras. I know another person who just has nice cameras, but I can't get in a nice camera field because, you know, I break things. You do. Stop that. I break a phone, I buy a new phone, I break the lens, I break a new lens. There's, I'm not, I can, there's, you don't have to have. Separating the breaking. Yeah, I mean, this, this is, this is the perfect thing for people who don't have this. Well, so if you did have a nice camera, and the nice camera happened to be a part of the next lineup, it's one of the Sony premium brands, you could get the QX1, and it's not only a phone camera attachment, but it also works with the next lineup, with the interchangeable lens system. So that's kind of cool. Hmm. That yes. one cost a lot more. I think that one's 850 Well, Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh. So let's talk about Lenovo a little bit. Oh, man, they, they, they really made did a really nothing. nice laptop. They did, they did nothing. They only have the one thing to demo this this IFA. Yeah, pretty much. It's a it's a Windows gaming computer. Is Windows relevant? I don't know. It's... So it it has an i7, some unspecified GTX Nvidia graphics card, 16 gigabytes of memory, one terabyte regular drive, and a 256 gig solid state drive available for only thirteen hundred dollars. Available in October, but here's the part that matters. It's really heavy, like insanely heavy. How heavy? You know. Really heavy. Now, that sounds really fine. It's just a laptop. It's People it's are used to it. It's only eight pounds. It's seven and a half pounds. That's nothing. What about the bag? The bag, you are the bag. You carry it. Like, you don't, it has a battery. You don't need a power cord. It's just, you just take it and go. 40 minutes on battery. 
uh, I don't know. Does yeah. it, how many hard drives are in it? Two. That's that's amazing. Well, one one spinning and one solid state. Two. That's that's pretty cool for a laptop. I mean, it is seventeen inches, so it can do that. So yeah. more computers, but of a Chromebook style. Oh, are Toshiba they really is introducing the Chromebook Two, which is a lovely name for a product. It adds a premium option to their lineup, a 1080p screen, a smaller design weighing a bit less. It looks very similar to a MacBook Air, but plasticky. Uh, it features the fanless Celeron from Intel, probably using some kind of a uh, Haswell, you know, architecture deal. Mm-hmm. Four gigabytes of memory, and it also includes new audio systems of some sort. So, there you go. Now, the price of the 1080p model is $329, and the 768 non-1080p model is 249 That's not bad. No, it's a, it's pretty good. Uh, I would just go get the 1080p model. Yeah. Uh, but, so, in the reviews from pretty much everybody, like The Verge, they say the performance of the Celeron isn't very good. You know... So, they, they what they did is they tried to open up Spotify... You know, the music streaming service. And they opened some other tabs. And whenever they would open another tab and then go to another tab, Spotify would stutter. That's, that's bad. So that could mean two things. Either the processor isn't keeping up or the memory is really slow and things are being unloaded from memory and it can't get back in fast enough. So mm. Either way, it still makes using it harder. Exactly. Uh, these two products will be available on October 5th. So uh, pre-order now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. In addition to that, Toshiba is also making a 11.6 inch Windows 8.1 foldable laptop. Very similar to like a Lenovo Yoga. Oh, those are cool. Mm -hmm. So this one will cost $329 in Euro, some unspecified price in the US. We don't even have a release date for the US. Uh, It's scheduled for Q4 release. Allegedly, uh, it's going to feature terrible specs. This is not a product. Yeah. I know. Um... It, It has a physical spinning hard drive. In a portable device. It's not... And you know why they had to do that, of course. Because getting enough flash for Windows to exist on is really expensive. Because Windows itself takes up 30 gigs, at least. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's, uh... You can always change it as soon as you get it. Well, of course. Probably. I mean, no reason why you couldn't. Well, I mean, unless they didn't want you to. I mean, it's just a... Hold on, I need a picture. Oh, you could totally open that up. Whenever you get a product, void the warranty, man. I don't, I don't, I don't understand your problem. I just don't know. Uh, just, just, put, just pump in another two hundred dollars into it, so I could just buy a, um, a use real it, laptop. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So let's talk about the uh, LG G Watch R. Man, does it look awesome? You know, it it does look good. But that's where it ends. It does kind of end right there. So it, it's using a one point three inch OLED, releasing sometime in October. A four hundred ten mAh battery, five hundred megabytes of RAM. Uh, the same Qualcomm chip as the original G Watch, so performance has no difference. It looks really nice, but on that screen, yeah, it, this like, is the only watch face that makes this watch look good. Otherwise, it's the same. Yeah, mm-hmm. it, yeah. This this uh, watch fetish needs to end. So again, if you look at the pictures of this LG G Watch R, you can see the contacts on the back. These contacts are the same ones that the original G Watch had and were corroding. Yes. And so, remember when we kicked off this show with uh, that wonderful Samsung news? The If you look at load the picture for the Samsung Curved S, yep. thing, mm-hmm. um, you can also notice those contacts. Those contacts. Yep. So, everybody's doing one the brand's contacts. Have, everyone's got the contacts. Yeah. You can see. Even the Moto 360, which we'll talk about later, has contacts. Yeah. It's a it's, it's contactless world out there. I mean, not everyone just has contact cleaner. They I, should. I spray the crap on it. Yeah, like, with Rain-X. No, 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 no. I got the... No, rain is like a dollar a bottle. This stuff is like $13 a bottle. Okay. Okay, I mean, it's just the Premier stuff. So, you know what else is Premier? HTC? Yes, they do make Premier products. It's things you desire? Mm, only 820 Oh, wow. Mm, no, I don't even understand. It's kind of like one of those Lumia names, just random numbers that mean nothing. Uh, so this is a, uh, big phone. It's 5.5 inches at 720 resolution. Like, is that 720p? Is that what I'm supposed to read there? I assume. 13 megapixel camera, which means it might even be better than the HTC One camera, which is funny, because that's supposed to be the real flagship. Yeah, it is. Uh, it has an 8 megapixel front facing camera, incidentally, which is, again, better than the flagship. It also has an 8 core Snapdragon 615, 
Which is better. Which is new. It is the first phone, in fact, to have this that is shipping somewhere in the world. Uh, however, it will not be running 64-bit mode until Android L is released with ART. Because current generations of Android don't run 64-bit on devices that aren't Intel. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's, that's, that's going to come, though. Yeah, so that'll come sometime later this fall. This device will also have an optional dot .view case available. If you remember the dot .view, it's the little ca- case with the array of LEDs that would light up and show the time and stuff. That's uh, Those are really cool. It sounds really great. Uh, this will actually be really cheap. It'll be uh, 329 euros at the end of September. So what's that going to be? A lot. Yeah. Only $500. But... It, it, it's pretty good, though. But I think it'll be comparable. It could be as much as 400 or as little as 350 U.S. So you think it would only be 350 U.S.? I think so. I, uh, this is supposed to be a mid-range product. That looks pretty high class to me. Mm-hmm, that's what I thought. And so that's coming at the end of September. Very cool. Mm-hmm. Like, this is one of those phones that I would love to see a Google Play edition of. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about the Nokia and Microsoft. Oh, the next Play Edition phones we're going to need to see on the market. Yeah, those will never come. You, you never think? Not anymore. So let's begin with the cheaper one. This is the Luma, 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 Lumia 730. Lum- it has a wide-angle, front-facing 5-megapixel camera because this is the selfie phone. That That is what's popular. Apparently. It is a 4.7-inch screen at 720p. It is a 4 core Snapdragon uh, 400, uh, 1 gigabyte of RAM, micro SD support, dual SIM, so it's not meant for the U.S. But there is a 735 version with LTE single SIM, which is made for the U.S. with the addition of wireless charging. Yeah, you see, I'm just getting lost in this naming architecture. Because it's awful. 735 means... Nothing. America. Yeah, exactly. Uh, like, this will cost a lovely 199 euros for the uh, dual SIM and 219 for the uh, LTE version. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, sometime later this fall, I guess, is what they're saying. Not, not, not that exciting. The other one is a downgrade from the Lumia 930. This is the Lumia 830... It is positioned as an affordable flagship. Oh. Apparently, things that are affordable are cheap. Yes, or cheaper than their previous flag. Well, so, so that, that, that does pose problems. So this only comes with a four core Snapdragon 400. Again, the same as the phone that was supposed to be even cheaper than this one. It comes with a one gigabyte of memory, which is again the same as the phone that was supposed to be cheaper than this one. 16 gigs of storage. A 720 p display at five inches, which is good, but again, it's almost identical to the phone that's supposed to be cheaper than this one. What sets this one apart, of though, is the pure pure view rear camera. Pure view is the fancy pants, you know, uh, camera tech that Nokia loves to tout. Uh, it's 10 megapixels. It has a Zeiss lens, which is really good lensing, and it has OIS. Cool. Now, you probably wonder about price. Well, um, there is no no mention of price. Hmm. That's probably okay, because I don't think this is a big enough jump to matter between this one and the 730. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I like the charging pads it comes with. Oh, aren't those great? Can buy. Mm-hmm. They, I wish my charging pad looked like that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. most of them come, like, you know, mine is that danky little rectangle. This is a big, green, glowing pad you can put your phone on. It's well, I think great. that, I think it's like that because when the phones are five inches, they have to be kind of big, although yeah. they'll just fall off. And that's why I rubber band my phone to my charger every night. Mm. Also, I have so many rubber bands. Yeah, that too. But no, um, 830s, 730s, and 735s. Isn't that uh, bad? What's that? Is that a 900? That That is a 525. It's a 525. Isn't that it's, the worst? It's just too many of these numbers. Yeah. Even Bulmer was uh, mentioning that even Microsoft could probably do it better. Yeah, Windows 9. Make it happen. It's no, not Windows nine, 900. 935. You know, 935.1 is going to be the best. Well, they could go to a Chrome versioning system. Oh, Windows 34 is out. Well, 34.1.8.25.8. Dash G beta. Oh man, does that just sound realistic? Okay, no. so let's talk about Asus. They made a Windows 8 laptop called the eBook X205. Wow! It is a one hundred and ninety nine dollar laptop running Windows 8.1 with Bing, which means it's the free version that Microsoft was telling us about last fall. Yeah, uh, it's the uh, you know uh, kind of 
Chromebook-esque Windows laptop that we have here. 11.6 inches, uh, 1366 by 768 resolution, which is awful. Uh, it comes with two, gig- two gigabytes of memory, a Bay Trail processor of some sort, unspecified model number. Um, it does come with, interestingly, 100 gigabytes of OneDrive storage, you know, through Microsoft, mm-hmm. just like Google Chromebooks yeah. through Google Drive. It's pretty similar. And uh, did I mention no release date? It's fine. But it does look like a nice thing. Would but you get it, one? No, it runs Windows. Yeah. Like, the first thing I have to do is I have to uninstall Windows. And so, do you know Do you know if Baytrail, is that ARM or is that... That's the next Atom. Is that x86? That's x86. Because if it is, then it might be useful, but otherwise it's not useful. Yeah. So I always get my Baytrail and not Baytrail mixed up. The other thing that Asus released was what they call the Zen just, Watch. Just, just want to point out one thing. Yeah. Just so you know... There are, there are actually trails that go to in the base. Bay. Yes, of like, course. Not, not, not anything to do with, you know, Intel. Maybe you should put the word Intel in the next Oh, time. man. You know, does Intel start with a T? No. That's why I'm not getting these results, man. So the Zen Watch is the, the Asus version of a uh, G Watch, more or less. It's, you know, almost exactly the same. Nothing much to write home about. You know, it looks like a watch. It, it's rectangular. It has a bezel. It has the charging contacts, of course. It's uh it look much bigger. Yeah, so it's it's but it's cheaper. It's only one hundred and ninety nine Euros. It is a one point six AMOLED to screen, four gigabytes of storage, half gig of memory, some Qualcomm processor, unspecified. Not exactly bezeless. I don't know what anybody was talking about when they said it would look good. And no release date. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. So with all of those things said, that is the bulk of IFA. Those are the things that that all the major OEMs discussed. Here in the States during the same time, Motorola was screwing up their announcement of the new Moto lineup. They had a private event, because why have one that was public? Not only that, they set their embargo to one in the morning. So nobody got news of the new Motorola products until Friday, a day after everybody had else already had done it. So that was kind of weird. So let's let's talk about some of the Motorola products. Do you do you want to tell me about the Moto X? Ah, the Moto X, sure. I can tell you all about the Moto X. Just, just letting the Verge load. What is the Verge now? The Verge knows everything. Like, so the Moto X has a five point two inch screen that is a Sam OLED. Um, now, have Stan you ever ADP? heard of a Sam OLED? No, I have not. Yeah, I don't know. But, but if, if they're putting it on there, it has to be Premiere. 13 megapixel camera, 4K support, and new dual LED camera ring. Snapdragon 801, which is, you know... Not that great. Yeah, they're in everything, though. Mm-hmm. And you can choose your own uh, hot words for uh, voice activation. So it's and, not just OK Google anymore. It's... Yeah, I mean, you could be OK Jarvis. Exactly. Or OK Ada. Don't do that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Um, front-facing speakers, so you can, mm. like, you know, hear what you're Listening looking to. at. Oh, oh, right, yes, because you look at your phone. <sighs> All the time. So um, ninety nine dollars on contract, or five hundred dollars off. Uh, well, that's actually not too bad. So that means during the Black Friday sale, it'd come down to three hundred dollars, right? We can only hope, and it looks awesome. So, so how how big was it again? It was five 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 point two inch. So, mm-hmm. what was the old Moto X? I think it was four point seven. Grew a little bit, a little bigger. So, so that's half an inch bigger. Now. A lot of people say that the old Moto X was the perfect phone size. You know, 4.7, just like you mentioned for the uh, 4.6 inch Z2 or Z3 compact. You know, it, mm-hmm. it, it is really a great phone size. I think your Nexus 7 or Nexus 4 is uh, 4.7 inches. And even people with huge, massive thumbs can still press every corner of the screen. Exactly. And it is just a lovely phone size. Because, like, you know, with the iPhone, you, you just can't if you're fat thumbed like me. Well, the new iPhone will be 4.7 oh. inches, so so that that problem will be solved. Current current things you can buy today, right? So next week, by the time you listen to this, it turns out, yeah. So I, I think that's an interesting thing that they decided to do. Now let's talk about something that's weird. That that LED ring. Let's talk about the LED ring. Sure. What is an LED ring? Flash. How does it work? I don't know. I kind of figured it would just be kind of like flash for your. You know, camera. Okay, so so my understanding of how the LED ring works, and I've never seen a phone have this, is that instead of having just two LED holes, they decided to make the holes half circles. 
and then put them around the camera. So normally you don't put your flash so close to the lens of the camera so you, to not cause lens glare and mm-hmm. refraction and you know bad things. But somehow Motorola made it so that that doesn't happen. So there really are multiple LEDs in each side of the ring around the camera. So when you have the Tesla LED H bulb thing, it you might can work. Strobe the crap out of somebody. Unless really it's bright. like the Nexus Five and it sucks. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. So I have a question for you. Does this look like a good phone? When you have the bamboo back, it does. Because what other options are there? I think there's a leather option, as we mentioned on our show. And I think there's just a regular black and white stealth plastic. Bamboo, man. Bamboo. Uh, yeah. The bamboo one does look the best. Now, anywhere in that Verge article that you just read thoroughly, didn't mention Moto Maker at all. No. No, that's gone. I I feel like I kind of never heard of it since. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Poor Moto Maker. Mm-hmm. So uh, let's talk about the Moto G now. Oh, the, Moto the Moto G, G has been refreshed. It's not called the G2 or anything. It's G2 just, plus X1? Uh, I think you're trying to sell for Y. <sighs> you know, I, it's unsolvable. And you got the Z3 out of it, so I don't get it. Uh, so the new Moto G has a 5-inch screen, still maintaining its 700 or 720p resolution. It uses the same... Uh, Qualcomm 4 core Snapdragon 400 processor. It does feature new Snapdragon 400, um, or, uh, you know, um, things, but nothing exciting. It's not like a Snapdragon 415, I think is, or 410. It's not new. It's unfortunate. It does feature front facing cameras, uh, that are the same, but the back camera, the rear camera, it's now 8 megapixels instead of 5. So it's a slight upgrade there. Uh, and, you know, not too much is different with it. Hmm. So a lot of people who are review- reviewing this one say, why did they make the best phone size bigger? Why did they do it? People like bigger? People like big phones, yes. That is the answer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, when you look around in your pockets, you go for the biggest thing first. That should be your phone. I look if there's a phone and a pen in my pocket, and I I'll always end up finding the pen. I don't, I don't know how that could ever be possible. Uh, so let's talk about the Moto 360, because that's on your wrist. It shouldn't even need to be found in your pocket. <laughs> Everybody says the battery life is awful. Really? So 12 hours. That's, that's, yeah, mm-hmm. that's pretty bad. Yeah. So everybody says it's also the best smartwatch out of them all. That's a problem. So out, out of IFA, this is the best one, uh, which is pretty bad. 12 hour battery life is, uh, really a deal breaker, I think, for pretty much most people. And sure, it might be nice to have if you have $250 just sitting around. That is the launch price. Um, with the uh, default band. If you want a metal band later this month, it'll be an optional $50 extra um, for $300 total. You know, it, it looks great. It, you know, looks pretty. Um, but that 12 hours of battery life, not that great. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Cool. Finally, we have the Moto Hint. Which is the coolest thing ever. Now, what does it do? Tell me all well, about it's the, it. It just happens to be the latest in earable technology. Earable? Mm-hmm. Okay, so what about it? Well... First of all, we gotta tell, talk to you about how it looks. It has a great mahogany finish. Does it? Oh, just a little tiny, danky little circle on top of it. Oh, look at those charging contacts. Yes, they are con- charging contacts that go directly into your ear. Oh my gosh, I never thought of that. Well, yeah, I mean, how else are the brainwaves gonna get sucked out? Or put in. Oh, the plot thickens. Either way, so this will be great for voice searching, everything else, accepting phone calls, and it is the new way to have a Bluetooth headset. This I mean, is, this is, Re- revolutionizing that market. I don't know if it really is. Yeah, it's just tiny. Okay, now do we have a price? No, not that I found. I think it's a uh, hundred fifty dollars um, when it launches. Right now, I mean, it's going to launch with the Moto Three uh, Sixty and the new Moto X. So, if you had this, how much talk time do you demand from this? I would say at least two days before charging again. What if I were to tell you it's supposed to have three point three hours of talk time and ten on standby? I wouldn't buy it. That just seems like the biggest drawback ever. 3.3 hours of talk time. If I had voice search, you'd be like, okay, Google, tell me about dinosaurs. Okay, or, well, so here, here's... Uh, it's ambiguous. Like, I probably don't ever talk on my phone. But so 10 hours of standby? 10 hours of standby isn't good enough. That, that needs to be... I need two days of between charges. Yes, but... So have you seen the carrying case that it comes in? It's a big metal... Not metal, but, it, you know, it looks like a, a yes. lug. Well, it can charge your device twice. So you charge that up, you take it with you, and you can just charge on the go. But it's another thing that I have to charge. 
You know, I don't think Motorola gets it right now. Yes, that I don't want to charge things. Twelve hours for the Moto G or Moto 360, and then how many hours for this? Three point three. Three point three hours for this. So far, I haven't heard of a good Moto X. Two uh, full chargers though, with the case. A good Moto. I mean, this is something you could just lose, but that's bigger than a thumb drive. The case like that, you won't lose that in your pocket. I see. I fear that this little earpiece would just fall right out of my ear, and I would never notice it. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Can you even find your ears? Yeah, you get so much hair and everything else. Oh, that might be, be a good thing. I could, I could hook the mo- the earpiece around some hair, and it would just fall, and the hair would catch it. And then when you're charging, you can charge your hair up. It doesn't need charging. It generates its own electricity. Yeah, but uh, I don't know. It looks cool. Just. I can't believe it has a little bit of that wood touch to it. I just I can't believe there's five. Oh, okay, not five hundred dollars. One hundred and fifty dollars. <sighs> now I I do admit that I am looking for Bluetooth headphones again, but but, but this, this is this not is, this is not going to give you the audio quality you want. This well, isn't Beats. Yeah, yeah. Well, this I don't want Apple-y. that. I don't want that either. I I just yeah, this isn't good enough for me. Yeah, mm-hmm. well, mm-hmm. so what Moto gives you. So that that's the entirety of IFA plus Moto. Now, what was the best product? Can I tell you something? Please do. I'm waiting for Sony to make that camera because that those lenses are so cool. I would see if I could put it on Nexus Four. I mean, they did make it, and you can buy it. It's, it's just it's available. Not re- it's now. not released yet. I mean, you can <sighs> that, buy it soon. Uh, uh, that just seems to me the coolest thing ever. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Like, because you don't even have to put it on your phone if it's Bluetooth, right? Exactly. You so know, I it's... could just put it on my head. Yeah, I you could, could put it on my current I mean, glasses. I mean, you can put it I on whatever the you best... can mount it to. Sony glasses ever. So it's Better funny how glasses. at IFA the best product is the camera. Is the camera that is detachable from your phone. What's really cool though is you can, uh, you know, your camera, your phone is the viewfinder. So you could attach it to just a tripod. Look around and, the corner, and you could look around the corner. You could have really cool and interesting shots. Put it on my shoe. And of course, because it's a real camera, you can do you know manual exposures and all sorts of manual settings if you want. No, yeah. mm-hmm. it that just seems like the future of photography for me. I mean, it's it's a pretty good setup. Uh, all it, the fancy pants cameras that one guy has, like he spends two thousand dollars on camera. It's, he's got a terrible viewfinder; you can't see what you're doing. Exactly. I mean, do you imagine having a whole something that's designed to look nice when you're viewing it? Controlling right. your I mean, expensive and, camera, and, and, and you know that that most phones are seven twenty or ten eighty p now. It's going to look good. And yeah, now the camera makers don't have to worry about making a nice UI. They don't have to make that other thing. Yeah, like they it's can just, just do a lens. Now obviously the, the camera does require use of an app to trigger the camera shots. I, I hope when you buy the lens you get the app free. I presume you do. Because if I have to pay five ninety nine a month for it, that's just no, the, the no subscription way. is gonna kill me. I don't I don't think after on top of that three hundred dollar investment. Dude, that's just dropping a bucket. This Putnam, this guy named Dave, his punk son wanted to make a video podcast twice a week, and so he bought him a two thousand dollar camera. Yeah, he's got like thirty thousand dollars in lenses and other things. He's just got rooms full of cameras. Now, obviously, the the Sony lens that we're talking about, the QX thirty, it isn't interchangeable. I mean, the lens you get is the lens you have. It's better than what this comes as a camera phone. Y- yes, that is true. It is better. Now, imagine that. Like, so, like, you want to take a picture with just. Your Nexus 4, something close up, something simple, mm-hmm. like your grass, no problem. But if you want to zoom into my grass from your house, 30x zoom, that's how you do it. Yeah, and do you know what I could do with it? I could take the camera, take a picture of my phone. You like, could do that. I could that. just go... Your finger would always be in it. Yes, so I, if we're reviewing the next device, so let's say you buy the Nexus 6, which isn't going to be called the Nexus Yeah, 6. Nexus X. Um, the Nexus, Nexus X. You could be reviewing it while taking the pictures from its very device. Yeah, I could do that. self-reviewable. But it I have is... a real camera for that. Well, this... All right, so I don't know how to compare camera lenses because I know nothing about cameras except for that looks awesome. Yeah. How is it compared to yours? So my camera has a much better aperture. It has a 1.3 aperture, uh, which means it's much better in low light. But I don't have super zoom. I don't have any zoom, really. I have 3x physical zoom and some crappy digital zoom. So what that means is that your camera, if you bought that, would have a way better zoom. You could zoom into a gazelle meters away. Yes, I, I love gazelles. They're very local animal, animals. <laughs> exactly. Mm-hmm. What do you think is the best product was released? So the best product here... Or announced. Uh, man, best product... 
I'd say the Z3 Compact was the best product. It is the perfect. Hey, is that is that made by Sony? Yeah, that is made by Sony. Oh man, yeah, uh, that is the best product announced, and it's the, it's the best phone you can probably be able to buy here. Um, otherwise, the other best product is, uh, is is probably one of the Chromebooks, one of them with the the Celeron that doesn't suck. But but I like both of us picking Sony products as the best. Now you want to know what the worst product is? Um, Lenovo. That their their new gaming laptop. The worst product is all the others. I mean, you just pick a watch. It doesn't even matter what brand. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so the most disappointing product is the Moto 360. If the battery life is as truly as dismal as 12 hours, it isn't really real. It's it looks nice, but it's that's it. It, it can never be worn anywhere. My day. So I I took the Nexus 5 out with me on Friday. Mm-hmm. You know, just cool. I left here at, at 10. I got to school at 11. Okay, and I got there way faster than that, but you know what I mean. Class started at eleven fifteen. I didn't use the phone the, pretty much during any classes. When I was, uh, you know, waiting my for my between my hour break, I used it for listening to uh, my audio book, and then the screen was off, and I was just reading. And then during class, I didn't use it again. When I got home, it was at fifteen percent, and I got home at four. You know, ten to four. That's six hours, and it was at fifteen percent, doing nothing. Hmm. Uh, that can't happen. So, so phones in the future need to have a battery, yeah. a real one. Yes. Yeah. And I, I think the Sony phones have a real battery. Yeah, it's Sony, man. Mm-hmm. Sony's everything. Yeah. So, so uh, you know, IFA. I don't know. Not that impressed. It's kind of like a secondary Mobile World Congress, and uh, that's about it. Yeah. Well, where can we find out more about this stuff? Well, I mean, if you wanted to find out specifics and pictures and, you know, in-depth reviews from The Verge and only The Verge, you can go to TheVerge.com. No, no, no. You can go to thenexus.tv slash ns32, which will link you to The Verge. Right. So because we, we want, want your page. Links. Yeah, we want your page <laughs> views. Now, this is special... 32, which is IFA 2014, on Tuesday, in a few days, we will be having another special for the Apple uh, event, which will mock all of this stuff and more with glory and excellence. Yeah. Hopefully. That, that's what I've been told. Uh, insider searches. Uh, so you can look forward to that with the uh, great Brian Mitchell, who reviews all of our uh, Apple products. Here. The only Apple light. The only one, yes. So that, that'll be on Tuesday. Uh, we don't know when um, the next At The Nexus will be because there are all these specials displacing us. So we'll, we'll have to see. Yes, and you will notify me. Okay, I will, I promptly. So a- a- anything else? Um, no, uh, have a great day. Have a good one.